I'll keep this quick and you can get right on back to that beach and maybe uh, maybe a drink or two along the way, though I'm sure you've got to do about 48 I'm, I, I'm going these. to drink during this. <laughs> yeah, it, it's happened before and some of it caused by me. <laughs> so this took a while. Any insight on why it took till August 18th for the prize free agent to come off the, book, the books? I, I think one of the things that happened with Kadri was I do think for a while he wanted to see if Colorado could swing. I, I, I do think that the part of his plan was could there be a, a way for him to return to the Colorado Avalanche? And, you know, I, I think the Avalanche weren't willing to go to the term that the Calgary Flames were. That's number one. And number two, I, I like there were some rumors that the Avalanche were going to move to Samuel Girard, for example, to get Kadri to stay. Mm -hmm. And I was told that wasn't going to happen. They, they simply were not going to do that. And so I think Kadri began to realize that the return to Colorado was not in the cards, at least not at what he was looking for out there. And the way I look at it, I can never blame a player for looking for the best deal that they can find. And I think once it became obvious to the Flames that uh, Kadri was not going to go back to Calgary. I think they were very aggressive. I think, you know, for me, Tim, and I, I, this is the third interview I've done today, and I'll say the same thing. I, I think this this interview, the summer changed for Calgary when Uyghur and Huberto were in the Florida deal. Like, they were they were reeling after Goudreau left, and they knew they couldn't resign Kachuk. And I think there was a big question about the direction of the franchise. But once they realized that Uyghur and Huberto were going to be the return, I think they said, why not go for a guy like Kadri? And I think they were very aggressive. I know there were lots of rumors that he signed with the Islanders and it was under wraps. I don't think that was ever true. I don't think there was ever a deal between Kadri and the Islanders. And I think one of the reasons was that the Flames were willing to be very aggressive and they were willing to make a very aggressive offer. So so there was no money under on the table from your understanding of, because it seemed like under many sources that it was almost fate to complete Kadri to Long Island. Um, was there money on the table there that Kadri decided it was a better fit in Calgary, or was it just Calgary was always a better fit? No, I, for I think the Islanders made him an offer. I, I don't think there's any doubt about that. I, like, like I think the the, the the thing in Colorado was term. I, I really do believe that. I think they were not willing to do the term Colorado was willing to do. The tough thing about the Islanders, and there have been a lot of rumors as to why it didn't work out there at this point in time. I, you know, I, I'm not going to guess publicly. I, yeah. I do think they were in it. Um, I, I just think I, I think Calgary was really aggressive. I think they were aggressive in the way that they made the offer. I think they were aggressive in the way that they sold themselves to Calgary. Uh, I think the fact that they signed Huberto appealed to Calgary, for example. And you know, look, I, like I, I think they're going to be a good team. You look yeah. at them. If you think that the NHL is wanting goal and on the blue line and down the middle. You know, Calgary's good in all those areas. And uh, I, I think at the end of the day, I, to be honest, and I could be, somebody might tell me I'm wrong about this. I think the Flames have known for a few days that they were going to get Kadri. And I think the biggest question was, what's going to happen with the other part of the deal? I think they had to move money. Right. And that, and that was what I said when I had heard Kadri linked to Calgary uh, two weeks ago today on the show was how do they move the money? So is it your understanding that Sean Monaghan to Montreal also includes a first round pick? I believe and I don't know this for sure. I've been told it's complicated. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I don't have but I, if it's a first round pick, I would suspect uh, Tim, it's the Florida first rounder. From the, the one they got in the Kachuk deal, right. I, I do know I had been told that the Flames were under the impression that if they were going to move salary, it was probably going to cost them that pick. Kadri under Sutter work for you? Yeah, you know, I, like I wouldn't be surprised if, like, in addition to the GM Sutter Tree Living, wh whose birthday is today, mm -hmm. I think Sutter was uh, was pushing for this. Like, I, I don't think Daryl Sutter, like, I don't think not contending or not competing hard is it is yeah. is in Daryl Sutter's vocabulary like I, I, I think like, I, I, we'll see what he says when he comes up for air um, but I wouldn't be surprised if when Goudreau and Kachuk were leaving Sutter said to the Flames you get me some players and we're going to contend that's kind of his attitude and so you know I think that's probably what happened here we did a board uh, to start the show uh, and it's up right now it's Kudrow, Chuck Monahan's total points from last year. Uberdo, Kadri, yeah. Uyghurs total points from last year. 
it's 246 for Uberdo, Kadri, and Uyghur, and what's out is 242. Is this mm-hmm. is this as good a job as Calgary fans could have possibly hoped for the way this started this year or this off season? I think so. Like Tim, go back to go back to the, when you heard the news that God, they, like they thought they had Goodrow signed and it didn't happen. And then so there's that moment, and then you have you find out that Kachuk has told you he's not re-signing. Like what were you expecting if you were a Flames fan? Like you were thinking it was going to be a disaster. Yeah, you know you were thinking the there was no. Yeah, that's what you're yeah, talking. and yeah. and and a very public hoof in the private. Yeah. And and you and you're sitting there and you're thinking, you know, we're going to have to trade for futures. We're totally resetting. And, uh, you know, like I, I had some people who, who said to me, uh, you know, hey, you know, Huberto long term, uh, Kadri long term. Those guys are, you know, Kadri's 31. The other guys are 29. We'll see what they do with Uyghur. And, you know, I, I say like we, you know, what's for left to do old line? I, I could I could be hit by a bus next week. Like I think I think you want to contend. And, you know, one thing that this league has proven is that. If you can contend, you've got a shot. And but the other thing is, there's always going to be situations where, if you want to, you know, four or five years down the road, you can see what it costs to take you to move those contracts. The other thing too is, we're seeing a league where, you know, you're, nobody's going to expect Huberto to be a hundred point player at age 35 or whatever. But players, if they're serious about it, you can be a good player into your 30s. You're not going to be a prime player in terms of your points your production will probably go down but it doesn't mean that you can't be effective right. these players they take care of their bodies than ever they're not like mid 90s score guys like you would need to they actually take <laughs> care of themselves into their 30s uh well said uh and very very true uh so let me ask you this because uh as being a mid 90s score guy i am also a prime 31 slash 32 thoughts guy and didn't Kadri come on with you and Merrick and talk about nixing a deal to Calgary back in the day? Yes, it, you know, and, and that's one of the things I did look at, Tim, over the last couple of weeks is, like, like I really thought at the end it was Colorado, Calgary, and Islanders for Calgary. I think some other teams like Carolina, potentially even Detroit, kind of kicked tires on a bit. Mm-hmm. But I think it was those three. And I looked into that. And, and the other thing I wondered, too, is, like, you know, I – it's funny like it's also like you know some men and women out there they have a thing if you ask somebody out once and they say no and they come back to you and say a few years later and say you know what i really regret it i know some people are like you had your chance you're out right and so i always wonder about that and the thing about Kadri that and i think calgary talked about that they said look he rejected us once do we go back to it and i think they just said we have to move past that and I think the thing, too, is, is the one thing about Kadri is at that time, he had control over that deal. And he wanted to stay in Toronto, and his family wanted to stay in Toronto. And I think the thing about Calgary, and I remember at the time when, when, when Calgary, he turned Calgary down, one of the things I heard from the Flames was, we tried to tell him, you're going to get traded. And so if you come here, we think it'll be a great place for you. And his response was, and he did say this, no, I still want to be a lead. So what did the Leafs do? They traded it to somewhere he didn't have control. Yeah. So I think that was about as much as Kadri saying, you know what, I uh, I want to stay in Toronto, so as long as I have control over it, I'm going to stay in Toronto. Right. You know what? I got news for you too, Tim. You're not going to find this hard to believe. You know, Steph? She said no the first time I asked her how to work that okay. <laughs> uh, for those who don't know, they are now happily married. <laughs> um, so last one for you, and and – I talked to Goudreau after he signed with Columbus, and I asked yep. him about Sean Monahan's wedding, and he got yep. emotional. Like you could see, like it, it affected him, and to see the way, you know, like obviously Sean Monahan got the contract, but the way it ended in Calgary and the way it seems it's ending now in Calgary is just a, a stark reminder of what a business this can be. Well, you know, someone sent me a note today, and I don't know if it's true, but let's bring it up on on air. Uh, I think there's all there, yeah, there, there's only one. I think there's only one player left from when Tree Living took over the team. Right. I think it's Backlund. I think Backlund's yeah. the last guy, and and so, you know, I mean, that sports is the nature of the turnover. I mean, the thing is, if you look at the Flames down the middle, 
They've got Kadri, they've got Lindholm, they've got Backlund. Like, that's a good center group. That's a really good center group. And unfortunately, Monaghan plays center, and you can't have a guy making $6 million as your number four center. It just it doesn't work. And, um, you know, the one thing I hope about Monaghan is, you know, his body's been through a lot. Um, you know, the, people had told me he was hoping to be ready to play at the beginning of the year this year. You know, it'll be a, it, for a place to jumpstart his career. I, I think that'll be really good for him. And I hope it works out for him because, you know, like I remember, I think it was Kelly Rudy who said to me, I remember sometimes sitting watching and saying, boy, like my hand just doesn't look like he has much left. And, and Kelly would always say, you know, just be careful. Like that guy's body's been through an awful lot. So hopefully uh, it'll be a situation where he can find something in Montreal. And maybe even get moved at the deadline uh, to a team that could use him. We'll see. Uh, Fridge, get back yep. to that beach. Uh, I know you were kind enough not to actually crack the beer and or drink while on with us. We appreciate that. But have at it, Haas. The, the, the bigger concern is I've got the charcoal barbecue bar right oh, now. So nice. I'm just making sure it ignites. So. Oh, nice. Just Thank the you. smell of the charcoal barbecue brings me back to the days. I love it. Uh, enjoy, Fridge. Sorry you. to take you from the family. All right, buddy. All right, be My well. pleasure. Take care, guys. There is uh, Elliot Friedman.